What's up, what's up, what's up? I see you, Mike Nicholson, what's up? What's up? I see you, Rosanna Bivens, what's up? What's up, people, what's up? Good morning to all of you, y'all. It is Thursday, it is Thursday, November the 3rd, 2022, and it's time for some headlines. We're gonna have some fun today. We're just gonna do what we do today. Yesterday, I see you, Lori Wallace, what's up, girl? Yesterday, if you were with us, um, you heard from Pastor Derek Holmes, um, and I strategically placed him right there um, that Wednesday um, leading up to the elections. Um, there's been a lot. We've been covering a lot. We've been covering a lot. I was sharing with um, Isaiah and Kenny, who are in the green room, and then Isaiah's dad, Fred Jones. I was sharing with them before we came on the air. I said, you know, I broke down yesterday right about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I broke down because I said, wow, we have been full stop coming in here, sharing um, sharing the information for voting. Um, we've been just really trying to give you what we believe the community needed. And then all of a sudden, the reason, if you're asking, why did you break down around that time? Good morning, Dr. Antoinette. Um, I broke down that time because the millennials start sending me their images, their images of um, of their their vote sticker. So I was getting an image from uh, Georgia saying, "I'm a Georgia voter. I secured my vote." And I was getting those one after another after another. And I said, "They get it. They get it. They get it." So I was just so excited, and I thought about the work we've been doing here on News in Motion leading up to November the eighth all the research we've been doing, all the gathering information, all the show notes, all the content, everything. And so, yeah, y'all, I broke down crying yesterday. I see you, Shirley Nicholson, coming in from YouTube. I see you, Regina Shorts, Pastor Alex, good morning. Adrian's coming in from YouTube. Jardinia, good morning. Judy Neal, good morning. Good morning, Latrice Jones. She said, uh, good morning, sis. No notification for NIM this morning. Look. Just reset it, just reset it, just reset it. I see you, Elizabeth Towns, coming in here also. So yes, y'all, I just wanted to be very transparent this morning and say, I broke down yesterday. I said, we've done the work, we've done the work. Now it's really in the hands of the people. So what's happening? What's gonna happen here with News in Motion? Well, today we're gonna go through some things. I got a throwback Thursday to throw you. Uh, Latrice Jones said, let me throw up some hearts to help this algorithm. All of y'all throw up some hearts. Just lay, just lay on the hearts for a moment and throw them up. So today we have um, our news, our regular show. Kenny's coming in here. We moved him from Wednesday to Thursday um, so that he can prepare y'all for the uh, sports that's coming up for the weekend. Don't forget that he's on here on Saturdays at 430. Um, and then we're going to also come back on Monday with some just a, so a little bit of information with voting. And then Tuesday is, of course, vote day. And then Wednesday, that morning, we'll do some of the returns. We can only hope that they're great returns. Um, but we'll, we'll just we'll see what's happening there. And then when we get into uh, the end of that week, we're going to start just relaxing a little bit, still bringing you news, still bringing you content. And then that following week, um, we're going to have a few interviews. I'm going to try to see if George Saunders is available to come on and talk about his book. I don't know if you're on here, George. I know you've been on here a couple, last couple of days. So um, uh, we're going to get that scheduled. We'll get another interview scheduled that week. And then we're off the week of Thanksgiving, that entire week. And then uh, we'll be back the Monday after Thanksgiving. Uh, and then we'll go in. That takes us into December. And we will go all the way to, I believe it is December the 17th, I believe, or the 16th. That's in December. That'll be that Thursday. And then we will be off as we are all enjoying the holidays, the holiday time going into the new year. And we will return on that Tuesday. I think that's January the 3rd. So that's what's happening. That's what's happening. That's where we're headed. And we still have content that's going to be coming. We decided we're not going to break necessarily. We're always going to throw in something that's dealing with civic engagement and voter education because that's who we are. Uh, Elizabeth says, I'm going to talk about my book right after I write it. Okay. Okay, Elizabeth. I can't wait to interview you. So let's get that book written. Okay. All right, y'all real quick. The Federal Reserve raised its borrowing rate 
by 0.75 percentage points to 3.75, almost a 4%, the highest level since January 2008. Yesterday, it approved its fourth consecutive uh, 0.75% increase in interest rates in an effort to curb the 40-year high inflation. Now, it is the sixth overall rate hike this year and part of the Fed's most aggressive initiative since 1980. Now, let me just say something about that. The Democrats are starting to split with this. They're like, you need to stop that. And they're really upset this happened before November the 8th. And actually, I said, ah, that was stupid. Why aren't you waiting until next Wednesday? Why did you have to do it right now? So there's a lot of talk about that. I'm telling y'all, Democrats got to get on the same page. They have to get on the same page. Y'all, this increase brings up the uh, the Fed's benchmark federal funds uh, rate from near zero in March to a range of 3.75, again, a 4%, the highest, again, in 15 years. So the rate sets the banks charge each other for overnight loans uh, and affects borrowing costs for consumers, including mortgages, auto loans, and credit cards. So there you have it. Now, if you're trying to save some money, you can. If you have Netflix, you can go to the $7 per month, but it's going to be ad-supported. That tier begins today, and it will feature, I don't know who would want to do this, it will feature four to five minutes of ads every hour of what you're viewing of content compared to the $10 per month plan without ads. So you do what you want to do. I don't need to see all that because I'll be done. I'll walk away from it. Y'all, um, I don't know if Kenny's going to bring this up or not, but I wanted to say this and he can bring it up too. But listen, listen, listen. See, if we would just save our money. Is Kim Edmondson on here? If we would just save our money. Washington Commanders owners, Dan and Tanya Snyder, they are exploring the sale of their NFL franchise valued at $5.6 billion. That's what a B, billion dollars. Y'all listen, if we would start saving our money and we see opportunities like this, we jump on that and start taking ownership of these things. We got to do it. We got to do it, y'all. We got to do it. Um, and then here's another opportunity, and I don't know if Kenny's talking about it. Now he'll probably get in, I'll probably get in trouble with Kenny later. But y'all, ESPN reports high-profile investors, including Steph, Steph, Steph Curry, I always mess up his name, Steph Curry, Serena Williams, uh, invest in a new tech-infused golf league launched by Tiger Woods, Roy um, Mac, Mac, McElroy? And others. So there's another opportunity we could get in on that. Y'all, Walgreens and CVS, the nation's two largest pharmacy chains, agree to pay approximately $5 billion each to settle a lawsuit for their role in opioid, cri uh, op opioid crisis. That's AP News is reporting. So, y'all, that's just some quick news. I got more for you. I got so much more for you. And then we're going to have some fun, some fun when it comes to voting. So get ready because you could win something. All right, bring on Kenny. Kenny, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Did I step, did I step on your toes too much? Not a lot. Not a lot. Yeah, but you got me a little bit. You got me a little bit. But all right. <laughs> I'm sitting here marking them off. I'm like, well, there go that one. Okay, well, no, but that's okay. Say that you can say it, but I was like, oh, we need to buy this. We need to buy this. You know. I would, lo I would love to get in on buying the commanders, and I don't like Washington, but. <laughs> Look, hey, we're talking investment. We're investment. talking investment. Hey. Kim Edmondson said, good morning. I'm driving, so I'll be silent. Now, I hope you were at a light, Kim Edmondson, when you sent that one. But we got you. We got you. Uh, Latrice Jones said, nice background, Big K. All yeah. right, go ahead. Thank Take you. Away. Don't y'all go anywhere. I'll be right back, and we're still waiting for Lexi to come in here. Oh, Pastor Alex says he misses Kenny's intro. Okay, hold on. Go ahead, Isaiah. Play the intro. We can do that. Okay, don't worry. Okay. News and Motion Family, good. All right, there we go. Thanks, Isaiah. Hey, here we go. News and Motion Family, good morning. Welcome to uh, Game Over with me, Kenny Stanley. Hey, it's going to be a big weekend in sports, and it starts tonight in the NFL on Prime. Got the Eagles who fly into Houston to take on the Texans. 
Uh, the Chargers head to ATL to take on the Falcons on uh, Sunday. The Bengals will try to right the ship as they uh, welcome in the Panthers on Sunday. The Jets welcome in their rivals from upstate New York as they host the Bills. Uh, which team will show that they're still playoff contenders? Will it be the Buccaneers or will it be the Rams as they face each other on Sunday? Sunday night, the Chiefs will host uh, the Titans. And on Monday night, football, the game will showcase the Saints and the Ravens. Uh, we don't have to worry about talking about the Steelers on Monday because they don't play this weekend. So we'll see what's going to happen. But <laughs> we won't have to worry about them losing. Sorry about that, Isaiah. But it'll be okay. In college football, uh, number two, Ohio State heads to Northwestern. Uh, I think the game of the week this week is going to be this Tennessee-Georgia game. I can't wait to see it. The kickoff is on at 3, uh, 3.30 on uh, CBS on Saturday. I can't wait to see it. Uh, I think Georgia's getting ready to take Tennessee out and bring them back down to life. Um, LSU Tigers take on Alabama. Will LSU get a win? Um, or uh, will, LS, uh, will LSU uh, give Alabama their second loss? We got to see. Um, Notre Dame, they host uh, number four Clemson. And the U from Miami, they take on Florida State in the first battle of Florida. That's a big rivalry when those three teams face off towards the end of the season every year. In Major League Baseball last night, the Houston Astros evened up the series at two games apiece as the Astros pitching staff combined for a no-hitter, a no-hit shutout, uh, five to nothing. In the NBA, I think the Lakers have found the formula and the lineup that's going to work for them and try to push them a little bit further ahead as they won their second game last night uh, in overtime as they beat the uh, New Orleans Pelicans 120-117. Uh, to 117. Hey, they're looking pretty good with this new lineup and Russell Westbrook coming off the bench. Hey, they looking fire right now. Uh, one of the hottest teams in the NBA right now are the Cleveland Cavaliers. It, 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 I think it's going to be a pretty good uh, season in Cleveland right now because the baseball team is doing what they do. The basketball team, they on fire right now, and they beat the Boston Celtics last night, 114-113. to 113. Uh, uh, The Clippers, they beat the Rockets 109-101. to 101. The uh, the uh, Toronto Raptors got all Jurassic Park last night as they beat the Spurs, running them out the gym, 143 to 10 to 100, and the Grizzlies topped the Trailblazers, uh, 111 to 106. Listen up, all my Tiger family here in the room and across the city of Columbus. Listen up, I need all y'all to get a ticket and come over here to Harley Field and let's. Uh, Let's cheer on these East High School Tigers, the best school ever. Let's cheer on these East High School Tigers as they welcome in Cambridge and host them for their second uh, state playoff football game ever. Please come on out and give them some support. Hey, that's sports. Back to Gail for more news. Go Tigers. All right, I'll be out there. I hope it's not going to be cold, but I'll be it's out there. It's going to be warm tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be warm tomorrow. Right, look, hey. Listen. <laughs> yeah, I can't said, wait to get there. My mom said, I think your cheerleading jacket is in the basement. I said, I don't think I can fit that anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kenny, for all you do. Again, y'all, don't forget to catch him hey. on Saturdays at 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, yeah, check me out on Saturday. I'll see y'all Saturday. See you then. All right, I see Lexi popped in here real quick, and then we got to get to some other news before y'all go. So if y'all can hang on with me, that would be great. What's up? Hi. Miss Intern. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to let you take it away. So go for it. Okie dokie. So we're staying on the topic of hunger, but this time it's taking a step forward. Um, this story comes from Global Citizen. There was a conference held by the White House in September called the White House Conference on Hunger, Nutrition, and Health. This conference was created to figure out ways we can end hunger in America. And from NPR, ways like abiding the child tax credit, raise minimum wage, and expanding nutrition assistance programs is what, per, what Congress is pushing for, what the White House is pushing for to Congress, excuse me. The president spoke at the conference saying, if you look at your child and you can't feed your child, what the heck else matters? 
He later went on to say, in America, no child should go to bed hungry. No parent should die of disease that can't, can be prevented. According to the USDA, as we already know, more than 34 million people nationwide, with 9 million of those people being children, suffer from hunger in America. Global Citizen said, nearly 30,000 glo uh, global citizens signed a, a petition ahead of the conference urging Biden to make a poverty and the cost of living crisis central to the conversations around hunger. More than $800 billion, $8 billion in food-related commitments were made from a variety of parties, including the AARP, National Grocers Association, and DoorDash, and the White House unveiled a national strategy to end hunger in the U.S. by 2030. So overall, it looks like the White House is starting to step it up when it comes to the conversation of hunger in America. We have to be the change we want to see, and so don't forget to keep stepping out in your community and help solve the issue of hunger in America. That's all for me. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I forgot national days. Your national days, I think y'all like it today. National Housewives Day, National Sandwich Day, National Make Men Make Dinner Day, and National Cashback Day. So it looks like dinner's on dad tonight. Did you say National Cashback Day? Mm-hmm. Oh, how, how are we going to have, how do we get that? How do we secure that cash back? <laughs> I'd like to know myself. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your time for really digging into to what's available when it comes to hunger. I mean, I think this conversation needs to continue. So I, I love your research, your work, and I know you're, com you're bringing that all in to under three minutes for your classes and things like that, but you're doing an excellent job. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I love doing it. Yeah. Yes. And then I also heard one other thing back to the national days. I can't let it slip. Did, it, did you say national housewives day? I did. I did. National housewives day. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. They come up with some silly stuff. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That Lori said that too. Do, do housewives get the day off? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have a great day. You I can't wait to give you a grade. I'm going to be like, she's straight A. <laughs> she's straight A. <laughs> Have a Bye, great everybody. day, Lexi. <laughs> All right, y'all. So um, uh, Judy says, I voted. Also, my Texas granddaughter who attends OSU voted for the first time. She was excited to vote and made her voice heard. If we can pull that up here so everybody can see that. That's great. There it is. Boom. Um, so y'all, you know, people are saying, it's funny how those of you who know me, you're texting me like, have you been crying? I told you I broke down crying yesterday. So that's the bags. I tried to conceal it as most I could this morning, but I don't care because I love y'all that much. Um, and that is my breaking down was seeing the millennials, um, whether it was my daughter who took the charge on that or any of the millennial team um, who, who they, they're no longer in the trenches now. They just we have our round our roundtable discussions once a month to see how things are going. They all went out to vote yesterday. So they started sending me um, at the same time their pictures of them in line with their stick uh, coming out with their stickers. And, and the one that came in first was um, I'm a Georgia voter and I secured my vote. And just to see them, they all started dumping into my text message one behind the other. So I don't know if they had a set time they were going to do it or what, but I did. I broke. And I thought about the content that we have been diligent in bringing to News in Motion since we returned after our break in September up until now. Yesterday was kind of like bringing everything together with um, Pastor Derek Holmes, who did a phenomenal job. We're going to give just a little bit more detail. I know a lot of this information we have shared with you has been somewhat overwhelming. Some of you have written and said, do you have to talk about it every day? Yes. And we're going to continue to do it even after the midterm election. It's just not going to be as intensified as we've been doing it. Um, so, y'all, we are down to the wire. Um, first thing I want to share with you, because this question has come up several times this week, um, parents and guardians, if you have students in college and they did not send back their absentee ballot, I don't know how you're going to get them home. But that's your only other option is to get them home so they can go vote. Um, so I don't know if there's like souls to the polls. If there's any, I know we have people that tune in all over. If there are anyone from um, who know that you have a um, an itinerary for souls to the polls this uh, coming Saturday or Sunday, 
please put that in the thread. Those of you who are listening by podcast or audio, all you have to do, the main thread is our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash news in motion. Now, uh, I did hear from several of you that you do not have a Facebook page. How do you get some of this information? We are going to work on that. I cannot promise that before the end of the year, but we're going to work on how we can get information out to you that we feel that is extremely important for you. So we are working on that. Thank you for those questions and sending that in. All right. So those of you are like, okay, I have not voted yet, but I want to plan my vote. You can go to planyourvote.org, planyourvote.org. Another great site is ballotpedia.org. And that's B-A-L-L-O-T-P-E-D-I-A.org. And if Isaiah has that, he can put that up. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, It's ballotpedia.org. Y'all, you can get your sample ballot right there. It's not too late. Those of you who are still trying to do early voting, um, uh, I've been getting some times that are coming in. I'll start with Georgia. Um, It seems, it appears that anywhere around 2.30 to about A few minutes till five, early voting. That's wrapping up, though. It's wrapping up. I think this may be your last chance to get the early voting, Um, or you may have to wait until Tuesday. Uh, Check your... Check your area first. Check your area first. Um, Their time, that seems to be slow. In Georgia, especially in Cobb County, uh, DeKalb County, Fulton County, early morning up to about noon, there's lines. You're going to be in line. They're saying on average about an hour, sometimes a little bit longer. But in the afternoon, those lines tend to be going down. Um, So there's that. In um, in, uh, D.C., um, D.C., Early morning, is there are lines before work, like once they open, but they tend to die down around 10, 30, 11 o'clock. They pick back up, though, around 3 p.m. So we have that. Um, in Portland, Oregon, I'm hearing that the lines um, are pretty good in the morning, but around noon, they get pretty uh, busy. They get long. Um, and then I have one more, uh, Plano, Texas. Um, Plano, Texas, they're saying that they're seeing lines, but the lines are moving rather quickly. Um, and then in Plano, Texas, they're saying they also need poll workers. I don't know if it's too late at this point. I thought yesterday was a cutoff, but they're saying that they know they're going to have some polling locations closed on Tuesday because they did not get enough poll workers. Um, uh, I'm thinking this is Mike Nicholson says, watch who y'all vote for, um, for real. They have a few, I can't understand that. Um, so y'all watch. Yeah. When, for example, when I, cause I early voted, um, I was watching everything. When you, when it asks you to review your ballot, review it, um, before you hit submit, once that prints off and you have it in your hand, I even stood there before I turned it in. I went through and made sure I looked at it again. Um, and even the guy was standing there. He says, is there anything wrong? I said, nope, just checking. I said, we got to check it. We have to check uh, what we're doing. So y'all, if you if you know that there's polling um, uh, available in your area and they still are taking, I think training is this weekend for those who came in um, later. It may be too late, but you can check to see. Um, but again, check ballotpedia and it'll even give you updates on if your location is closed or not um this is great news for arizona following a hearing in a suit brought by the league of women voters of arizona and others a federal court issued an order to block unlawful voter intimidation and uh, at ballot drop boxes there was a lot of that that was happening in arizona and so we want to give you these phone numbers again Uh, This is for voter intimidation. Um, The election protection hotline, I think we have that. We'll put it up. We'll also read it. It's 1-866-R-VOTE. 1-866-R-VOTE. In Spanish, if you need the Spanish, and I don't think I have this one to put in the banner, but it's 1-888-V-E-Y-V-O-T-A. Again, that's 1-888-V-E-Y-V-O-T-A. V-O-T-A. We'll get that in the chat at some point. And then the U.S. Department of Justice Voting Rights Hotline, that number is 800-253-3931. Again, 800-253-3931. The TTY line is 877 
877-267-8971. Oh, we have that. Thank you, Isaiah. Uh, 877-267-8971. I would encourage y'all to write these numbers down because we don't know what we're going to see, when we're going to see it, or how we're going to see it. So that's some information. So I decided since this is Thursday, we're going to do Throwback Thursday uh, from Election Time 2020. So Throwback Thursday. I don't know why y'all asked for this, but I thought I would bring it out since you all have asked. Some of you said you need a reminder of as what to do. So let me give you a reminder. You need to have your ID. You need to have your ID because we don't know if you have not already early voted and you're, you're going to vote on um, the 8th. If you take medication, have your medication on hand. You want to have that. Uh, you want to have something to read because you don't know how long you may be in that line. If you um, are needing assistance, have a chair, have somebody with you, something. But let me say this. Know the new laws. We gave um, some information oh, probably a month ago. Um, and if I find that link, I know I have it somewhere. I'll put it in this chat or put it on the News in Motion page. I'll also take it and put it in the chat on um, LinkedIn and on YouTube so that you will have it. I'll get um, Gina to go to the podcast and put it in the description of the podcast. Know the laws for your state. Know the laws for your state. If you can't have anybody, <laughs> Dr. Antoinette said, no tuna, no boiled eggs. That's on my list. Um, if you make sure you can have somebody to assist you. Now, for those who have a disability, Yes, you can. That's that's a law. That's a rule. You you have to have someone to have assistance. Y'all remember it. Marion says no mayo, no tights. Y'all got it. So listen, y'all have make sure your phone is 100% charged. I love I love y'all coming in with the y'all already know where I'm going. Have your portable battery, make sure that's charged. Uh Jacqueline said leggings, no tights. I love it, y'all. I love it. I love it. I love it. A uh, bottled water. Now listen. Listen. Yeah, Rosanna, no dairy. <laughs> Dr. Antoinette, tights aren't pants. I love that y'all remember. That's two years ago. But listen, y'all, listen, listen. Hear me, because this is happening in Georgia. I heard about it. If somebody hands you a bottle of water, don't take it. Please don't take it. Please don't take it. People are doing that to set you up. Everybody's not good people. Everybody's not good people. Listen, do not take bottled water from anyone that has a law that says you cannot hand out water. If you take it, you are risking your vote. If they give it to you, they can be in trouble as well. Y'all have your own stuff. Know the laws. I got to find that link so everybody can read your state and your laws and make sure you pass it on to other people. Bring your own bottle of water. Have some fruit if you need it, some crackers if you need it. The weather's supposed to be excellent everywhere. That's just amazing. Uh, protein bars, sunglasses, your chair. Have a cooler. Have a sandwich. Make sure there's no mayo on it. Have comfortable shoes. Uh, women, we already heard it, leggings, leggings. <laughs> Dr. Antoinette said, BYOB, bring your own bottle of water. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and a lot, and, and have a ton of patience. Have a ton of patience. Keep those numbers with you. And I'm going to read these numbers again because there are things that are starting to happen. I um, mean, you want to have this information. So the election protection hotline is 1 866 R vote. 1 866 R vote. Um, Take a screenshot of that number. Um, Isaiah, if you can put that back up there, I'd greatly appreciate it. Take a screenshot of that number, put it in, in your Rolodex, whatever, however you want to do it. So election protection hotline, 1-866-R-VOTE. And then the Spanish line is 1-888-B-E-Y-V-O-T-A. And then the U.S. Department of Justice Voting Rights Hotline is 800-253-3931. Again, that's 800-253-3931. And the TTY line is 877-267-8971. Again, the, TT, the TTY line is 877-267-8971. Now, who can be a poll monitor? Let's get to this. Um, in many state poll monitors, must be trained and certified by a political party or candidate. However, they cannot intimidate you. If you feel intimidated in any way, shape, or form, or somebody's lingering around you, looking over your shoulder, call one of these numbers. 
call one of these numbers. Yes, wear a mask, wear a mask. Thank you, Jacqueline. The other thing, what can poll monitors do? Let me be very clear about this. Um, uh, certified poll monitors are allowed inside the polling place, but they cannot tell you how to vote. They cannot ask you who you're voting for. They can't do that at all. Uh, states may have a limited number of poll monitors per candidate uh, party at any given time, but they cannot intimidate you. They cannot ask you questions. They cannot ask to see your ID. They cannot do any of that. They cannot ask you what you're wearing. They cannot do that. All they can do is linger around and watch. If you see anything out of the norm, make sure you're contacting someone. Latrice Jones says, if you see something, say something. Don't let any wacky business jump off. There's that. Now, now here's something else. I want to make sure you hear this. If you are needing a secure location, let's say you need Braille. We've talked about that early on. We also talked about that in 2020. There is a special location. You just need to communicate. Hey, I have a disability. Um, I have a visual disability. I need a private room, a private space, but they cannot get in there to do that. I don't know who that is. Uh, Isaiah, knock those three out. Oh, that's in you, uh, YouTube. Hopefully you can knock those out um, if you can. Um, Y'all, that's, see, that's what happens when people start tuning in. You're going to start getting all kinds of things. Um, uh, what do I do if my qualifications to vote are challenged? Hear this, y'all. Now, laws vary. So again, we'll get that link up there to you as soon as we can. Um, if your qualifications are challenged, uh, you can give a sworn statement. You ask for this piece of paper, y'all, a sworn statement that, that you uh, satisfy the qualifications to vote in your state and then proceed to cast a regular ballot, not a provisional ballot, a regular ballot. So you want to ask for the sworn statement. You want to sign it. I'm going to go a step further. Once you sign it before you hand it to them, get out your cell phone and take a picture with you holding that and then ask for a regular ballot. Again, the phone numbers that we've been giving you are um, uh, important information. Um, the next thing, what do I do if I'm not on the list of registered voters? First of all, I've been asking y'all to do this um, and I, I want you to keep doing it. Check your voting registration right now if you have not already voted. Check your voting registration. Deal with that today. Don't wait till Friday. Over the weekend, you can forget it. Monday could be too late as well. Check your voting information today. Um, uh, take a picture of it from the screen. Take a screenshot from it. You can you can go to IWillVote.com and do check voter registration. You can go to Ballotpedia. You can go to any site. Plan my vote. You can go to any site. You can go to your secretary of state, but thank you. I will vote.com. Do your uh, voter registration. It says check registration. Check it. Take a screenshot. And when they challenge you, say, uh-uh, just checked it. Make sure it's date stamped so you can show them when you uh, when you checked it. So so you're not so that you're on there. Now, if you get to a place and they say your only choice is a provisional ballot, I would still call one of the numbers that we have given you. I would still call one of those numbers. Um to be clear, can people campaign in or around your polling place? They have to be at least 200 feet from the polling entrance. entrance. Um, and then here it is. What are the rules for assistance for voters with disabilities or limited English? Under federal law, I'm going to just read this. Under federal law, voters with disability, uh, disabilities or limited English proficiency may get help voting from a person they choose. And that's where you can bring your own person or choose someone there, as long as it's not the voter's employer or an agent of the voter's employer or union. Uh, they cannot be turned away from the polling because of a poll worker thinks they do not have the capacity to vote. Please, please, please make sure you get this information out to other people. They cannot determine if you have the capacity to vote. They, they cannot determine that. Um, we want to make ourselves available here at News in Motion, but let me be very clear. Let me be very clear. Please, please, please give us time to respond to you. Give us time to respond to you. Um, there was someone, um, and, and I share these not to out anybody, but there was someone who 
kept inboxing me almost every minute. Like you haven't responded back. I don't sit on I don't sit on Facebook and wait for your messages. I don't do that. So it's going to take time. So if you're at the polling location, don't wait for me. Don't wait for me. Contact one of those numbers. I say if you can put them up one more time. Contact one of those numbers. You can contact the um Yes, thank you. 800-253-3931. Again, 800-253-3931. And what's the other one, Isaiah, please? Uh, election protection, 1-866-R-VOTE. 1-866-R-VOTE. That's your best place to go. That's your best place to go. The other thing, I need to be extremely clear with you. I will not tell you how to vote. I will not tell you how to vote. I'm not doing that. So if you're looking for me to say which way you should vote, I can't help you there. I can't do that for you. Study, go to ballotpedia.org and study your ballot. Go to ballotpedia.org and study your ballot. You're welcome, Jacqueline. You're, you're welcome. Once you have voted, call, text, post to social media, encouraging more people to vote. Um, please do that. So y'all, you have, since we returned in September, Every day we touched on voting. Every day. There are a lot of people who tune into News and Motion just to get this information. My hope is that it has blessed you, that it has helped you, that it has prepared you, and that you have been motivated to do some homework to figure out some of this on your own. Our, our job was to just put it out there. It was your job to go dig deeper to see which direction you're going. Um, uh, Donita said the weather forecast in Columbus is upper 60s, low 70 from today through Tuesday. Study your ballot and get out and vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. So, y'all, uh, again, we're going to Monday. We'll touch on a little bit of this. We're going to bring you other news. We're going to start transitioning to where we go from here on Tuesday. We'll talk a little bit about voting, encouraging people to get out there. We'll share the numbers again. Um, Wednesday, we'll do some um, um, election uh, review, if you will. Um, and then Thursday, we may or may not be on here Thursday because we might need to breathe. And then the following week, um, we'll do a couple interviews. We'll get a couple books out there, encouraging you to buy some books from different authors. Um, and then the week of Thanksgiving, we are not on the air, not even Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. And then we'll be back the Monday after Thanksgiving. And we will go to that, I think it's the 16th or 17th of December. And then we will be off until January the 3rd. I believe that's the Tuesday. So y'all, just a lot. And so when we come back in January, um, we're going to still do education when it comes to civic engagement, community involvement, volunteerism, philanthropy. And now we're adding leadership and we're adding back finances. So look for that. We have, um, we have our content built up through the first quarter and we're excited about it. We are excited about it. All right, y'all, let's talk about the inspirational message and then I'm out of here. The inspirational message today is just from my heart. Just that's what it is. It's from my heart. And that inspirational message is when you have a call on your life, you have a responsibility, whether people are with you or not, to do what God has called you to do. You have a responsibility to do it. You may have one person that's in agreement with you, one person that's following. You may have zero but you still have to work it out. You still have to walk it out. That's your responsibility to do it. Many of you have a call on your life. Well, all of us have a call. But many of you have a call on your life that you've been struggling with. You don't know what to do with it. Just start doing it. Just start doing it. Along with that, I was in a conversation um, the other day with a very good friend of mine. Um, I almost didn't get out the car to eat with her because I thought she was sick. I was like, mm-mm. No, no, I ain't getting out the car with you. But anyway, we ended up having a great conversation and we were talking about fees and, and, and our worth. And I said, you know, we have to stop dummy, dummying down, playing ourselves small. 
with our fees. Our fees are our fees. Either people are going to pay them or they're not. And we have to stop being embarrassed um, to even share what our fees are, share what it is to cost to promote products, share share what that is. And and as, as black and brown people, I'm going back there, as black and brown people, we have got to get over the hump of thinking that they're not worth it or thinking that, oh, I'm not sewing into what they're doing or thinking that I'm not going to support them or back them. Um, um, I haven't seen George come in, but I'm going to just share this about George's book. His book is really good. It's really good. That's why I can't wait to interview him. It won't be next week, probably the following week if he's available. But even with that, it's like, how do we get his book in the hands of many, 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 many more, not only uh, Black women, but, but Black men um, and even young boys? How do we get this book into their hands? And so even as I'm reading it, that's why I'm not finished with it yet. Even as I'm reading it, I'm, I, my mind goes to how do we help get this book out there? How do we help? And, and some people may pick up his book or other books and say, oh, okay. No, it's deeper than, oh, okay. We have to get beyond just our, our name brand people thinking that this is the only people we're going to go to. And these are the people who, who we, we say, okay, we'll, we'll help them out. I love what um, Pastor Holmes said yesterday about ye or yay or whatever you want to call him. Um, when he said, you know, he left the community. We got to stop leaving our community. We have to stop doing that. We have to. Um, and I'm going to say this again. I know y'all get sick of me, but I don't care. I love her. It's my girl. I'm so glad the Lord allowed our paths to cross. I think her her podcast is absolutely phenomenal. It's exceptional. You know, I, I every time I see Davia, every time I see her podcast, every time I see her reel, I don't know what it is. I'm like, Y'all, y'all talking about Oprah, y'all need to be talking about Davia. There's such a blessing and anointing upon this woman and her podcast. And I'm like, and, and I do, I'm looking at her views. Like how many views we have here? How many have they increased from the month before, whatever, none of my business, but, but I use that and I, and I get angry sometimes and say, just she already should be in a couple million. Because this content is content that's needed out here for other people. So I started thinking, how do we all collectively just start boosting her, putting her stuff out there so that more and more people can see it? But here's the problem. We won't share. And y'all sharing is free. And we have to really get to the root of why won't I share this? Pastor Alex said, Davy is the bomb.com. She is. She really is. And it's like, how do we get past that? Even when I raised a question about um, uh, social media, and I said, if there is someone who comes out with social media, a platform for black and brown people, we'll be like, I don't know what it is. Is it secure? Why do we think that way? That's a slave man, slave woman's mentality. That's also a poverty mentality that we must break. We must break that, y'all. We must break it. If, you know, I, I go back to uh, Tuesday, it's on the ballot, when I talked about Black women being on the ballot and how Black women was not getting, they were there, they're not getting the same amount of money that other candidates running for office are, are receiving. And I'm talking Black women over white women. They're not getting the money to run their campaign. What's wrong with us? Seriously, what's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? Even here, I'm gonna be this, this, I'm gonna be this transparent here. Even here on News in Motion, when we call for ask, you know, come on, we're doing a lot of research, just five dollars. Can we just get five dollars? Not one person will respond that day. Isaiah will tell you, not one person. And it's like, what's wrong with us? Really, what's wrong with us? And I've said to my husband, I said, they probably see me, they probably know where I live, they probably know what I drive. I said, and they're like, uh-uh, she don't need anything. I don't. But the work that we're doing, let me change that. I don't praise God in this season. There was a time I did need it. People just didn't know I didn't have any food in the house. Hello, somebody. We got to stop knowing or making a, a perception of what somebody may or may not have. Yeah, I'm going on a tangent, but I don't care because this has got to come out. We need to do better as a community and as a people. We do. We really do. 
we take, we, we become takers and not givers. But I believe in what the Bible says, because I'm a follower and I see it over and over and over again. When we give, it will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. That principle is real. That principle is real. <clears throat> Why not sow on good soil? Why not do that? Wherever that is. Um, uh, Dr. Antoinette said, this vexes my spirit. Debate for prices in those types of marketplaces. Otherwise, pay the person or go to someone else. There's that. Lori, absolutely. There's just something about her that leaves a wonderful impression. Uh, she's a beautiful person, period. David, Davia fan. Um, uh, Mike Nicholson, um, man, Davia Williams Stevenson's been blessing a brother for real, for real, and checking on me. Um, Shirley, yes, uh, we really do. Cherie, what's up, girl? What's up? I'm missing you. People compliment our empowerment t-shirts all day, all day, all the time, and they refuse to purchase one. The proceeds support our training, which is no cost to the community. Help me understand it. That's what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Help me understand it. I don't get it. People will see this mug. Oh, nice mug. I want to get one of those. They go to go, oh, I could go to the store and get me a plain one for $3. You could. you, And that's what you should do since that's what you want to do. Lori says, when I was ladies, when I was ladies off about 15 years, when I was laid off about 15 years ago, someone said to me, you don't look like you're laid off. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's just amazing. We have to change our mindset, y'all. We have to change our mindset. We have to change our mindset. When um, I'm going to put this on blast, when I asked you all to bless Isaiah, 20 years old, for his birthday, young man who is not out in the streets, not doing anything crazy. He is a, he's a, he's a grown young man, if I can say it that way. I don't know what it was. I, I reached out, I said, I said, I'm just curious, Isaiah. I said, I don't want to know who. Did anybody bless you? He said, yeah, two people. What? Are you kidding me? And 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 I, I turned back around and put it back out there again. And I guess a couple more did. But we have to really ask ourselves why. We will go get our hair done, our nails done. We will go get Mercedes Benz. And I ain't hating on you. Uh, uh, BMWs, Teslas, whatever. Range Rovers, whatever. We go make sure we take care of ourselves. We go by the fancies that we go get in line for Yeezys. Yeah, we do. We do. I don't, but we do. We go get some Starbucks, whatever. Buy Isaiah a cup of coffee, y'all, or hot chocolate, whatever he's drinking legally. Buy somebody, just say, you know what? I appreciate you. I, lunch is on me today. You don't know. You could be blessing that person, whether they have it or not, whether they have it or not. So when we come to this election season, we're coming to a close to this election season. How are you going to sow into your community? How are you going to sow into um, uh, in any type of civic engagement, community partnership, you, your, your, your philanthropic uh, vision? What does that look like? Y'all, what startup are you going to sow to? There are a lot of startups that are happening. What business are you going to bless and sow into? Because they're just doing the work. Y'all take the person out of it and look at the work. Look at the work. Y'all, Davia says, oh my Lord, thank you. You never know when someone needs a lift. Boom, there it is. And I'm going to tell y'all, out here doing what we do, it's not easy. Oh my God, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's like, okay. What are we going to do? And I'll go back to, I don't know if Elizabeth Towns is still on here or not, but I'll go back to yesterday or, or two days ago. Man, the distraction of a comment. And she wasn't throwing shade. It's amazing how people just want to think that that's what's happening. She wasn't doing that. She wasn't doing that at all. But the the the, the, the vision on Yi and Ye, which is so insignificant, and that was not the point. It was not the point. Why do we do these things? Why? Why? Hopefully when we come back in January after, and we'll be here, I'm talking about when we, when we kick off 
of the new season in um, January 2023. We're going to get into some of this. And, and believe me, Davia will be on the show because she's going to help us with our mental and to get to the root of some of these things that are going on. Davia says we lean into the illusion, scarcity mindset. We have to practically lift one another up because no one else cares. That's it. That's it. And here's the truth. Here's the truth. Uh, let me read Lori's real quick. I was on the set all day on Isaiah's birthday. Would you please put your cash up in the thread? Lori's asking you to put your cash. Thank you, Lori. You, you, thank you, Lori. Now, I wasn't saying that for y'all to do that, but thank you, Lori, for doing that. Uh, Isaiah, put your cash app up. I believe it's still in the banners in there. But I want to go back to something Davia says. There are times that we, those of us who, who are working, we're doing the work, we're launching podcasts, broadcasts, businesses, whatever, we're launching those things. And we feel alone. We do. We do. That's why it's so good to have some people around you who's going to cheer you on and lift you up. You don't have to have a phone call. You can just send somebody a heart saying, I'm thinking of you, whatever that is, whatever that is. And we know it's inflation. We know it's inflation. But as we're going into the holiday season, as we're going into the holiday season, y'all do not forget the brown and black people that also have products and their prices may be a little higher because they're trying to feed their family, feed themselves, pay the rent, pay the mortgage, pay their car payment, keep their lights on, keep the supplies coming into their business so they can continue to produce products. And before you say, well, then they should shut it down. No, we should support. The answer isn't they should shut it down. The answer is we should support. So even on um, on News in Motion, we're, we're giving eight, not giving, we're opening up eight spots to do products like we did last year. Um, we're going to, if you're interested, just let us know. We'll shoot you the price of what that's going to look like. Um, so if you have a product, uh, whatever that is, we're going to do that. We're going to open up eight spaces for you to be able to do that. So let us know. We also want to once again put together a directory where we can get that out there. That will be done under Ready Publication uh, Directory. We can get out there all the products. There'll be a fee to insert that. That will be a free digital download that you'll be able to get. But it will you will have to pay to put your product in there. Yeah, that's this is how we do what we do. Uh, Marion says, never assume anything. Lori says, say that, Gail. For some, that's our only business. That's our only business. All right, y'all know y'all sick of me. I'm out of here today. I'll be back on Monday, God willing. Oh, by the way, this is my anniversary month. We will be married 31 years. I want to do the same thing we did last year. Um, last year, um, I we've been doing this now for probably five years, but just like last year, um, for 31 years, we're asking, I'm asking people to sow $31 into News in Motion so that we can help uh people uh, stay in their homes, pay um, their electric bills or whatever. That's what I do when, when we do a call like that. So you can send a cash app and my cash app is MIM today. The dollar sign M as in Mary, I M as in Mary today. Um, listen, I've made a post on uh, Instagram on yesterday talking about I love me some him, but hear me. We have a beautiful love story, but that was that is not without challenges. There's days I wanted to be like, peace, I'm out of here. I'm sure there were days he wanted to do the same. But the secret is we grow through the storms. We grow through the storms. Um, and love me some him. Love me some him. So 31, so we're asking for that. Um, if you want to do that, fine. If not, that's okay too. All right, y'all. I'll be back on Monday. So y'all know what I say. Stay well and remember, make some bold moves. I'm out. Yeah.